The Mariners are a sinking ship and we are merely witnesses as the passengers drown in the sea below. What peril struck this ill-fated vessel? Well, a lot. Seattle is introduced to Major League Baseball with the Pilots, a team rushed to fruition thanks to a Missouri Senator being triggered by the A's moving to Oakland. The only thing of note they do is suck enough air to go broke thanks to being nowhere near ready for the big time. Things get so bad that they are bought by a used car salesman named Bud Selig and move to Milwaukee before the next season. That was fast. The state of Washington bitches enough about the move that they are given another franchise called the Seattle Mariners, a team that has a legitimate stadium and some semblance of long-term stability. The only punishment for such a deal with the devil is being completely terrible. For the next half decade... Keep blowing, Lenny! It's not gonna make the Mariners less shitty! Guess what? I lied. Keep going. Oh, you were almost to 500, so close. I'll be laughing at your failure in the corner. Take this consolation prize of an elite talent named Ken Griffey Jr. He might not suck as much as you do. Nope, still garbage, even with the Griffey father and son duo. Maybe next time you'll bring fans into your stadium, right after they stop wallowing in self-pity. Congratulation, Mariners, you finally posted a winning season for the first time in franchise history. Unfortunately, your so-called hero Jeff Smullyan is gung-ho on packing the team up like Sea League did all those years ago. Regardless, a knight in shining armor comes to save the day. Nintendo? Mamma mia! The news has your stock plummet and revert to typical ineptitude. Who the hell is Alex Rodriguez and why should I be comforted by this disaster? Omar Vizquel just won a gold glove, but that Rodriguez kid is on the way. I know what to do. Trade him to the Indians! The Emerald City likes the smell of garbage players and cash better anyway. The cleanup efforts don't avoid the inevitable of being irrelevant for the next few years. Well, the Mariners are forgettable enough that the local government doesn't give a shit about their plight and is cool with them fucking off. Years of failure with terrible attendance, a decrepit stadium, and Sisyphean rock pushing have led to a dire situation. The franchise is on the brink. Around 500 deep into August, there is no hope. Might as well fold and await the inevitable. How the fuck did this awful franchise pull an Osferatu and come back from the dead? They made the playoffs? Something must have fucked up the true timeline. Someone get it back, please. The Mariners end up bringing hope back to the miserable citizens of Seattle by making a passionate run to the ALCS. As a result, local politicians' hearts grow three sizes and approve a new stadium for the team. The franchise is saved. With guys like Griffey, Randy Johnson, Jay Buhner, Edgar Martinez, and top prospect A-Rod, who knows what they can accomplish? The future is brighter than ever. A future full of cost-cutting as they let go of many key players and nearly trade Edgar Martinez to the Mets. At least they've won 10 straight and might make the playoffs. They proceed to punch their fans in the dick by losing 8 of 10 and failing to make the big dance. Surely this won't be a repeatable offense. Who the fuck is David Ortiz and why should I care if he's gone? At least I know who Dave Hollins even is. The Mariners have gobs of talent throughout the lineup, but still need a piece or two to bolster the overall picture. The bullpen is too much flaming wreckage to get them over the top. Mike Timlin is the prize. All it's going to cost them is one of the top prospects in baseball in Jose Cruz? What the hell? This gross overpayment is not enough. They need Heathcliff Slocum and his over 5 ERA to shore things up. These two bums we gave up will amount to nothing, we swear on it. They pretend to prove this gross overspending right with a 90 win season. All of it only leads to a relentless beating by means of Orioles in the ALDS. Perhaps you should have given up even more futures for pitching death. Yep, there's the dick punch back to futility. How about some more bullpen collapses to ease the pain? Oh, that's making it worse? Too bad they have no interest in paying Randy Johnson and are about to trade him. Why the fuck would they acquire Mariano Rivera? He's a failed starter. Fuck off, Yankees. Say goodbye to the big unit, Seattle. He's off to Houston for some prospects. Maybe these Garcia and Talama sprouts can become something. Wouldn't you guess it, the playoff hopes were a lie. Look at this shiny new stadium for Seattle to enjoy. There won't be much else to cheer for as the team once again shits the bed and fails to do anything of note. You tired of the dick punching yet? Tough shit, Ken Griffey Jr. desires to live closer to family and demands a trade to... Cincinnati? Good luck with that, Griff. The Mariners can live without his talents as they build themselves back to a strong 91 team and make the postseason again. They crush the spirits of White Sox on their way to the ALCS. I feel tingly all of a sudden. That tingly sensation turns out to be diabetes. The god-awful bullpen amputates the leg as all hope is obliterated by the Yankees. The prize of failure this year is losing your star talent in A-Rod for nothing. Watch as he goes to Texas for $25 million per year for a decade? Have fun being trapped, Rangers! The real prize, however, comes from the land of the rising sun. The Japanese Taikab. 
A man who will not only revolutionize the game, but introduce the sport to a new audience. One name will cause the league to tremble in fear. Ichiro. The Ichiro Shogunate wastes no time in committing wanton destruction across the baseball realm. A true juggernaut boasting the most talent in Mariner history. Ichiro performing as advertised, Brett Boone coming out of nowhere to be an all-star, Edgar Martinez still raking, the pitching depth is now a strength of the team. The bullpen isn't a total dumpster fire. 116 wins on the way to beautiful freedom. A record-breaking season full of this hope thing that Seattle knows little about. No need for baby steps, boys. Onward to your glorious future! They are once again death starred by the evil empire. The best record in baseball's history, and you shoot yourself so hard that you loop back over into a laughing stock in less than a week. Like seriously, you couldn't even make this into a series? God, you're pathetic. I hope you don't make it back here for another 20 years. May Game 5 haunt you for an eternity. What a Farewell. Pathetic display. For being utterly decimated, they sure rebuild quickly. The Mariners boast another strong season and are three games ahead of a tight AL West. They brought cups for their fans, too. No pain this year. The protection was apparently red solo cups. The dick punching continues as Seattle reverts to pedestrian form, conveniently missing out on a playoff spot. 20 game winning streaks by Moneyball will do that. Lou Pinella puts his foot down. He's had enough of the organization's cheapness and commandeers his managerial ships for Tampa Bay. Being dumped for the goddamn Devil Rays. That's embarrassing. His more even-keeled replacement, Bob Melvin, leads the team, once again, to another strong start. A seven-game lead in their division should be enough motivation to get the team to add. Management is once again tied up in the back and does nothing at the deadline. Jeff Nelson has become an enemy of the people by criticizing our inactivity. He shall be sent to the Yankee Gulag. Take that, asshole. The Mariners, yes, punch their fans in the dick. They slide out of the playoff picture because Moneyball decided to keep happening. That shit's a fad, we're good there. Carlos Guillen is also a fad. He can go on to the Tigers where he becomes a core contributor to playoff teams. We also have this Mike Cameron thing that we can toss along with him. Great news, boys! Your contending window has slammed shut on your face! You're terrible again! No reason to pretend to like these old guys, get the fuck out of here! What has John Olerud done for me lately? You know who hasn't done anything for us lately? Heathcliff Slocum. Who were those two prospects we gave up for him again? Jason Veritek and Derek Lowe. Two key contributors to the Red Sox World Series push. Don't you worry, we would've ruined them if we kept those two anyway. At least Jose Cruz didn't turn into much. Unlike this David Ortiz cat. Now where the fuck have I heard that name before? Congratulations, you have successfully wasted the career of Edgar Martinez. You also wasted a record-breaking season for Ichiro. It's the other consistent trait of Mariner baseball besides dick punching. New GM Bill Bavese is doing things. Bold things, in fact. Look at them catch the big fish of Adrian Beltre and Richie Sexton. It's a new age of baseball in Seattle. The statement is correct. The only leading the Mariners do are in drug suspensions. Just don't waste Felix Hernandez like you did those before him. It's just like you wasting the third overall pick on Jeff Clement. Just like Mariner hopes he rakes through AAA only to punch the Major League team in the dick. He doesn't develop whatsoever. Prevent this in the future, please. Uh-oh, Mount Ichiro erupted outside of Japan thanks to poor team culture and god-awful leadership by Mike Hargrove. Let's cure these horrible ailments by signing a bunch of random dudes. Nope, still total diarrhea. Why the hell do the Indians keep calling about our shitty prospects? First they wanted his Drupal Cabrera, now they want this... Shin Su Chu kid. They're gonna be nothing. Go to Cleveland and die like everything else. The Mariners once again do this adding thing the competitive teams try to do. It helps, but Mike Hargrove is somehow still here. He finally got the hint by means of Ichiro and committed seppuku outside of the stadium gates. Ichiro then agrees to a five-year extension. These are completely unrelated events. This self-sacrifice galvanizes the team to be within one game of the division lead in mid-August. We got extra protection this time, too. The Mariners add brass knuckles to amplify pain to the dick punching. Losing 15 of 18 is a blow few can recover from. This team needs the final pitching pieces to get them over the top. We need bona fide workhorses. Let's take our time like Eric Bedard does between pitches and acquire him for a massive sum. Carlos Silva, too. We shall pay him the bounty he deserves. Let's see how your promising season has gone so far. Can you guys please stop with the ball busting for one goddamn moment? I remember Richie Sexton, the big bopper who was supposed to solidify first base. Turns out he declined rapidly and has become an immovable albatross who could neither hit nor feel. We can fix this, just need a body bag and an unsuspecting car to throw into the ocean. He can lie next to the incompetent Bilba Vasey. 
What other chaff do we have to burn through? Jose Vidro? That dude sucks and we're paying him 8.5 million per year? How god awful was Bavesi? The failure lasts all year long. $100 million payroll, a 101 lost season, league laughing stock. Who the hell knew that spending money doesn't work if you just throw it around aimlessly? Okay, the goal is to do the exact opposite of what made us god awful. Hot GM prospect and analytical savior in Jack Sarensic. Moneyball marinated manager in Don Wakamatsu. We're good to go now. Just don't look as former GM Pat Gillick built a World Series champion in Philadelphia. Hey look everyone! Ken Griffey! He's a fossil, but nostalgia! This should distract the viewing public from the fact that Eric Badar can't stay healthy if his life depended on it. His shoulder has to meet its maker. Who did we give up for him again? All-Star Adam Jones, among other pieces. Great. Meet the future of Mariners baseball and Dustin Ackley, whom you can't develop worth a damn. At least you aren't total garbage. You're over 500. Nowhere near the playoffs, but it's a plus. Adrian Beltre can attest. You aren't content with hitting just the fans in the dick. Jack isn't going to let the Mariners fail like Bavesi before him. The key is to do exactly what he did and throw money around. Sean Figgins is a piece that can definitely fit the second base hole. We need a legit number two for King Felix as well. Cliff Lee, that's the guy we need! Turns out the Carlos Silva signing also became a sexton style albatross to deal with. Fortunately, the Cubs will take his uselessness off. All for the cancerous price of Milton Bradley. Ken Griffey Jr.'s swan song is going so well that he's allegedly sleeping in the dugout and is promptly driven off to retirement land in Florida. He pulls a Seattle Pilots and leaves abruptly. A fitting end for a wasted career. We did get one of the best prospects in baseball for trading Cliff Lee, though. First baseman Justin Smoke, whom you still can't develop with a damn. Yeah, we acquired Josh Lukey as well in the Cliff Lee trade. He may have raped a woman, but boys will be boys, am I right? Who cares if the team has always been against domestic violence? It's 2010 for crying out loud. You thought you were going to be good this year, weren't you? Well, how does another 101 lost season sound? Painful? You think your dick would be resilient by now? It's obviously Wakamatsu's fault. Fuck that guy. Yeah, Melton, you're far too much cancer for your god-awful production to deal with. Kindly get the fuck out and take your money with you to therapy. Meet the future of Mariners baseball and Danny Holton. He develops Eric Bedard syndrome on his shoulder all but dies on him. Woof. I mean, you are mediocre as hell hovering around 500, but you are only a half game back from the division lead. Look, an oasis lies before us. The oasis is a mirage. How do you feel about 17 straight losses? You can think it over as you fall into a Sarlacc pit. We have done it, gentlemen. The Mariners have acquired one of the top prospects in baseball in Jesus Montero. He does become one of the biggest busts in baseball's recent history, but he'll keep feasting on ice cream sandwiches. Meet the future of Mariners baseball in Mike Zanino. This undercooked steak is ready for eating off the bat. Sure, it's still frozen in the middle, but the fuck do we know about prospect development? Congratulations, you give the final farewell to the wasted prime of Ichiro. Watching him in pinstripes. Shameful fucking display, Jack. The Yankees? There's also the reward of mediocrity to comfort your failures in player development and accountability. Sean Figgins has all but forgotten how to play baseball since becoming a Mariner. So you're telling me that Jack overpaid for a one-year wonder? I mean, it's not an anchor. It's even worse than that. Perhaps he can hit his golden parachute. What a stunning surprise. The Mariners are still baseball's version of constipation. Manager Eric Wedge smells a rat. Zarensic has gotten drunk with power and is deflecting blame like a force field. He takes your contract extension offer and shoves it up your ass. You have to spend to bolster the lineup, they say. Who gives a shit if he's in his early 30s and will probably melt on the field in the second half of his contract? Robinson Cano is the true second baseman for the next decade. This is finally your chance again, Mariners. The Oakland A's have gone all in yet can't stop tripping over themselves. You have the talent to make it happen. James Paxton is emerging as a legit starting option. Plus, you've wasted enough of King Felix's career. Do something good for once, please. In what can be described as vintage Mariners, they do just enough to pretend to be competitive, yet fail miserably to go the extra mile. You miss out on a playoff spot by a game, eliminated on the final day of the year to the A's. Cue the dick punch. Seattle now has something they haven't had in a while. Expectations. The strong season by their standards now has them thinking big. A nice contract given out to a legitimate power bat in Nelson Cruz, the continued prime of King Felix, a stud prospect in Taiwan Walker, and the most talent the organization has had since 2001. There's no way the punches break through a foot of protection. 
Look, everyone! Edgar Martinez! He's gonna teach hitting and shit! Lloyd McClendon not only steals first base, he also steals your protection. Just like every other time there's hope, the fans are relentlessly punched in the dick. It's not even anywhere near hopeful, they simply disappoint. Jack Zarensic has been revealed to be nothing more than a fraud in manager's clothing. He can take his deflecting waste to the bottom of the Pacific with all the failed prospects of seasons past. Perhaps he can develop into fish food. A new age of Mariners baseball begins yet again with a bounce back year. They end on a crazy pace by going 18 and 9 in September. Just enough to be three games out of a playoff spot. Did you call this a dick punch? Probably. Once again, the Mariners have expectations placed upon them. Look at this great shortstop they've acquired in Gene Segura. They've even bolstered the pitching core with Drew Smiley and Giovanni Gallardo. This year is going to be great, as Smiley can't pitch and Gallardo turns into a pumpkin. Oh, it's gonna be one of those years again. Yep, called it relentless dick punching by means of disappointment and failed ambitions. 40 pitchers used. And Justin Smoke developed on a real team in Toronto. Why do people like this team again? Hey look everyone! Ichiro! Who knew that a guy in his mid-40s wouldn't be good at baseball anymore? Poor Ichiro. What a waste. You can add Robinson Cano to that list too. 80 game suspension for PEDs? Sounds like a recipe for disappointment. Wait a second, you aren't punching your fans in the dick? You're winning again? Sure the run differential's disturbing, Kyle Seeger is falling to shit and King Felix may be cooked, but this is so refreshing to see. 20 games over 500 and Mitch Hanniger is turning into a legitimate cornerstone. You have an 8 game lead for the second wildcard. At least be okay and you can finally snap the postseason drought. It has to be said that after all the dick punches, this is probably the most painful. The team reverts to mediocrity after a hot start and has a sub-500 record after the All-Star break. They're nowhere near the playoffs. Once again outshone by, you guessed it, the fucking Athletics! Man, wouldn't want to be his insurance carrier. I mean, at least there's promise for next season, you say? I'm afraid I have bad news. They blew it up. They blew it to smithereens and patched everything with whatever they found. That's a dick punch in itself. It's time to be honest with ourselves. Was this franchise really worth saving? All of the wasted talent over the years, all of the disappointment, all of the failure. And for what? A hollow claim to a paper championship almost 20 years ago. Bravo. Maybe next time you can simply turn your fans into eunuchs so they won't have to feel pain. No wonder why Seattle gives more of a shit about the Sonics. And that team hasn't been around in a decade. Cameron. Into right field. Spencer. Yankees for the fourth year in a row have a date with a fall classic.